This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Stefan Knapp tells us how the development of chemical probes helps us to find new drugs. Hello, Stefan. Hi. Why is it getting harder to develop new drugs? In the last three or four decades, we completely changed the way we develop new drugs. Originally, we started out testing molecules, usually natural products that we extract from plants or animals, directly in human or sometimes in an animal model. Now in the 70s and 80s we gained understanding of molecular mechanisms that leads to disease and therefore we can more rationally design uh, drug molecules that specifically interact with uh, a molecule in the cell that we call a molecular target and therefore We start from a very good hypothesis to make a selective drug molecule avoiding side effects. However, this process, of course, uh, needed that we develop a lot of new technologies and platforms from uh, an empirical testing to a rational design of a molecule. For example, in cancer, we went from uh, cytostatic molecules that in principle kill all cells that grow quickly to targeting one selective molecule that is deregulated in a cancer. For example, in in a certain subtype of leukemia, um, we target a protein called BCR-ABL. This is an oncogene and drives the growth of this cancer. So from the initial um, chemotoxic approach, we had uh, a good survival benefit of the patient, but many, many patients died uh, quite quickly during this therapy. Now we can actually cure this disease by selectively targeting the molecule that is deregulated in this cancer. However, the complexity of uh, and the large number of molecules Mm -hmm. that are expressed in a cell that is, uh, or in a diseased tissue, makes it extremely challenging to select the right target for the development of new medicine. And what approach do you use? Our approach to finding new targets is to use chemical probes. These are small active molecules that work on disease models that we can develop on cellular basis or maybe using an animal. So molecular probes are not yet drugs, but they mimic very efficiently the function of a drug or the role of a drug in a certain disease. So we can try to study um, what will happen on a cellular level if we inhibit our selected target before we endeavor to go into a very lengthy and costly uh, drug development exercise that sometimes takes up to a decade. And what is epigenetic therapy? Epigenetics is a mechanism that controls the expression of proteins or targets in your in your body in your cell so you see every cell in your body has the same genetic information so what makes a liver cell a liver cell and the eye cell a eye cell is determined on which genes are actively read in biology we call this also transcribed uh, this transcription is determined on how we package these genes in larger assembly that we call chromatin. And this determines uh, pretty much the function of a cell. So what we learned is that the transcription is influenced also by our environment and it can be inherited between uh, even between generations. Sometimes that leads to development of diseases. So with epigenetic therapy we try to target epigenetic mechanism that leads to uh, reading of certain genes in order to reset the system to a normal state and thereby try to cure the disease. And what are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? I'm a structural biologist. Um, the main task of my research is to make uh, images or pictures of these molecular targets for which we want to develop ultimately drugs from. So development of new technologies led to um, to a new ability to make many of these structures that we can understand now entire human gene families and how they are regulated 
and then also how we can use this information to make selective drug molecules that only recognize one among hundreds of these molecules. So making these molecular structures and making them available enables now a rational design of drug molecules. So why does your line of research matter? Why should you put money into it? In modern society, uh, people grow older and older, and that means we have a need to treat degenerative diseases, such as neurodegeneration, for which we have almost no treatments at the moment. That means if we want to address medical problems in the future, we need to make drugs uh, more quickly and also more cheaply and make it accessible for a large number of patients. What we are trying to do and uh, how we want to contribute to this process is uh, on one hand developing high quality tool molecules for the evaluation of targets in medicine. On the other hand, also similarly importantly, we will make these molecules available to a large research community um, without restricting their use. What we are doing is we are trying to work with many companies in parallel in a very open way to establish new proof of principles for developing pharmaceuticals and enable drug discovery in a very efficient way in a later stage in industry. And finally, how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? The National Department of Medicine is one of the largest departments with a large diversity of different uh, disciplines in medicine. From my research means development of tools and structural models for the design of molecules. I have a large community available of other scientists in which I can collaborate to um, develop um, uh, new therapeutic principles. And for this is the department an excellent location. Thank you, Stefan. Yeah.